Hello everybody, Dick Coughlin here. Now, uh, the odds are if you're watching this, it's going to be on Patreon. This is going to be a part of a series of smallish, quickish... You motherfucker! It is one in the morning and you beep now! But that kind of comic timing is not what you're going to be seeing in these videos because I have found about, I think it's about five or six videos and it... You, please understand what I'm sacrificing here for your ent entertainment. These are videos of Dave Rubin either performing stand-up comedy, or I say performing, you know, uh, standing on a stage talking into a microphone with evidently no desire or need for the consequences to be anything resembling a laugh, or he's talking about it. And I'm going to watch each one. In, each one's going to be its own video. I'm going to upload them all. I'll put it in a playlist. And if you're on Patreon, you'll be watching this first. Uh, you might get to see this if you're not on Patreon. Um, but uh, that's on you, buddy. So anyway, hope you enjoy these folks. <laughs> I know I will. Let's crack on, shall we? Now, I thought it would be a good idea to start with something short. As you can see from what's on the screen, this is a Ruben Report video. Don't worry, it's only three minutes long, but then this is me, and I'm pretty sure you should be well aware of the fact that three minutes, I can drag that out for quite some time. Um, yeah, and this is a three minute video. It was, if you've never seen Dave Rubin uh, perform stand-up live, don't worry, nobody has, even the people who have seen him. Um, if you want to recreate it, um, if you wait till about, well, it's about two in the morning now, go out into the middle of the street, 2 a.m., right? stand on anything that resembles a bit higher ground, look out and just listen. What do you hear? Right. Absolute silence. That is only a little bit less noise than what Dave Rubin gets. Okay, and we shall be, I shall be going through, I'm, I'm putting it off pressing play, I'll be honest with you. Here we go. Oh, God, the things I do for money. Oh, here we go. And then I suppose in that way, I'm a bit like Dave, so. Oh, good, good tunes, man. Good tunes. One of the things I'm most amazed by at the moment is how the ideas and issues that we're talking about every week here on The Rubin Report are relevant not just in America, but all over the world. Okay, I want you to consider, let's consider that for a moment, okay? Um, it's not very funny, but then I don't, it's hard to determine with Dave what is meant to be funny and what isn't. He's kind of like, he's like, you know, it's a bit like watching Dane Cook perform. I don't know what's meant, I don't know where the punchlines are, but I know they're there. I hear people laughing. I can't work out why, but <clears throat> anyway, so Dave, this is a guy who has been at this stage, I think, I think this film, this video came out like last year. And this is, he is amazed that the issues being discussed on his programme, which, let's face it, are not, there's not loads of ideas, because I like ideas. That's, what the, can, I just fucking, can we just, why does no one ever pull him up on that? I, well, I like ideas. Everybody likes ideas, you fucking ring. Ideas are just literally the, the initial, the catalyst for everything we say. There's no one on YouTube who isn't, Discussing ideas. It's like saying, I like stuff. What do you do on YouTube? Well, I like to sort of open my mouth and let sounds come out. These sounds, are, you know, the sounds I make are determined by different letters of the, of the alphabet. I put them in an order. And I just like doing that. I like words. I like words. And I like stuff. I like stuff, things, and words. So yes, but Dave is amazed that the rest of the world exists and that America is not special. Brilliant. The amount of email I'm getting from you guys across the globe, whether it's Sweden, Australia, Brazil, Hungary, or Japan, is actually staggering. Can you imagine living in Japan and finding this cunt and thinking, yeah, he, he's, he's got it sorted, you know? I, it's like, I mean, <laughs> the, let's be honest, these are probably Americans who are living in these countries. Hung Hungary! Oh yes, Hungary, the country where Nick Griffin, uh, the leader of the BNT, emigrated to. He moved into a town that had uh, that, ma that, that made homosexuality and Muslims uh, and Islam illegal. Right? It had a Muslim population of two. And I hope they were gay. I don't know, but anyway. It really seems to me that there has been a reawakening as to what being a free human being is all about. What the fucking hell does that even mean? Yes, Dave, you are the first man to ever sit on a sofa and discuss the concept of freedom with a bunch of fucking quasi-closeted, well-spoken racists. What do you mean? Like, he has, it's this idea that... It's like, what? What? 
Oh God, he's such a just a, he's just an insufferable guy. Look at that fucking face. Look at him. Fucking he just. He just looks. You know people wear. You know you know you get fat suits. He looks like he's wearing a stupid suit. You know, I know he's not a mouth breather, but that's probably like that's how stupid he is. He's supposed to be, but he keeps forgetting. You are in charge of your own life, and if you start with this simple premise, you can accomplish anything. Oh, that's all the slaves needed. That's all you needed to be free. You are in charge of your own life, cause uh, yeah, cause I live in that world, Dave, where I get to make all the decisions. Don't I? Hey, yes, it's easier to say you're in charge of your own life when you've got Coke Brothers money coming in. Oh, I'm sure this is a topic to do with comedy. Anyway. While the discourse on social media may seem more toxic than ever, I see a growing dynamic group of people... What do you mean more toxic than ever? It's been around for like, what, 10 years? It's always been toxic. That's the internet. Because the internet is a place where, where loads of people can just turn up all at once, anonymously, say whatever the fuck they want, and go. And it turns out that when you put human beings in that environment... We will say and do things that we would never do if we were, you know, in the same room as people. Not with you. I mean, I would fucking abuse you all day, Dave. Coming together through ideas and conversation. Coming together through ideas and conversation. You don't come together through ideas and conversation. You come together through agreeing on ideas and conversation, Dave. And you are not the one who did it. Yes, talking. Ideas. Dave invented ideas. Freedom and conversation and only he can see it it's called your subscribers actually it's called made up bullshit regardless of where they were born or the color of their skin you're on twitter dave you don't know what the color of their skin is you fucking prat yes your audience is so diverse you've got every different type of white bloke you can imagine we're partnering with learn liberty again this week oh learn liberty oh, of course yes <laughs> yeah we're very interested in that <laughs> learn liberty yeah and our guest is Rajshree Agarwal. Yeah, oh, right. You obviously said, you said to your agent, can we get the most foreign sounding geezer? Because I'm doing this whole thing about, you know, I'm not caring about the colour of the skin and I need a proper coconut to interview. Can we get him to, we can't get, we can only get Charles Murray. Can, can, can we change his name? Like, can we say I've got a speech impediment? Right. She was born in India to a traditional family. It's a, it's a she, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mention that bit either, yeah. Charles Murray was Indian, born in... She was born in India to a traditional family. What? You mean, like, of, of, of Indian people? As opposed to what, Dave? Only to move to America, where she now teaches about capitalism at the University of Maryland, where... Wow. She, so she, she was born in India to a traditional family, and then she moved. This is a riveting story. I don't know about you. I fucking... I'm, I'm welling up here. It's like Shawshank Redemption. She is the chair and professor. Of She's the chair. She's just the chair. Of entrepreneurship. She believes that capitalism provides maximum freedom and happiness to all people, regardless of race, religion, or anything else. Yes, it, of course it does. It, of course it's regardless of race, religion, and everything else, because all you need is a shitload of money. That's kind of the where the that's kind of where capitalism does eliminate any kind of bigotry. Because if you are a black guy or a gay guy or a woman, or transgender, right? Capitalists don't care. Have you got a shitload of cash? Fantastic. The ideas of freedom that once sparked... The ideas of freedom. Dave, swivel on the ideas of freedom. ...in her as a young child are the same ideas that she's now helping first... Oh, that helped... That got rid of her. So, so how did she end up in America teaching capitalism then? Was that her rebellion? ...further by teaching minds of young people today. Because there aren't any rich people in India. That is what freedom is all about. It's freedom is to go to America, is to go to America and teach people what you think is right. If you want to join me in spreading these ideas of freedom in India... I would rather, I would rather join, literally, I would rather join John Wayne Gacy in spreading the death of children. I'd rather join, I would rather join, you know, I'd rather join uh, Magic, Magic Johnson in spreading AIDS to people, right? Anything but you. I wouldn't spread fucking mar margarine for you. Individuality in person. I'll be joining Jordan Peterson on his 12 Rules for Life tour for as many dates as I can possibly fit in. Oh, my God. Could, is there anything more bleak than that? Jordan Peterson going on tour. Well, fucking hell. I'd hope you've got... 
be careful. I mean, you, I mean, you you might mock, but Jesus Christ, we've seen what happens to this guy when he he fucking caves it. I can see. Forget the stones and the who. You know, he drove a swimming pool into a Rolls Royce. Imagine that though. You're going to go. You've got tickets to see Jordan Pe. Yeah, we got tickets to see Jordan Peterson live. Support act Dave Rubin. I would. Li- I would rather. I would rather be Sisyphus. That that would never end. And he's going on his tour for as many dates as possible. Why, exactly? But because you've got what, what's what's wrong? There? You're so hectic. Is it? Is your entire schedule of sitting down on a chair in a warm studio, you know, saying the same thing as you did last week to a different person? Is that stressing you out? Also, I, also, this, but this is interesting. I will say this. This is the funny thing. Right? It's bad enough having Dave Rubin as your hype man. Right, but you're fucking. <laughs> The groovy gang with Dave Rubin. But it's bad enough having him as your hype man. He went on tour with Jordan Peterson and he described it as a double header. Jordan Peterson is on stage for 90 minutes, right? Which is an impressive time. Dave Rubin, right? 15 minutes. 15 minutes. He is supposed to be... He calls himself a comedian. He's been doing this how long? He's been on YouTube for how long? I've written two comedy shows that have largely both been based around the internet. They're over... They're you know, combined over two hours long. He can't get more than 15 minutes. 15 minutes. I, I'll just go out. I'll go out there, Jordan, double header, me and you, buddy, from here to a day. I'll do 15. You just finish him off with a nice cheeky hour and a half. What, what does Jordan Peterson do for, a, do for an encore, right? He kicked off. Does he eat a steak? The tour a couple weeks ago at the Beacon in New York City, where the energy in the room was absolutely bananas. I'll- yes, it, I bet it was. Absolutely, well, Jordan's not going to like that. He's they're veg- they're for the fruit and vegetable. Yes, I can imagine they were all there at the front. There was fucking all of the all of the uh, all of the alt right frat boys were taking their fucking tighty whities off and throwing them at him. Jesus. Be traveling with Jordan to the UK. Incel t- Incel Con 2018. To speak. In London at the Apollo Hammersmith Theatre on May 13th, and then on May 14th... The Apollo Hammersmith. Oh, please book Dave Rubin for the Michael McIntyre show. I have the incredible honour of speaking at the Oxford Union. You have the incredible honour of speaking at the Oxford Union. See, people protested when Tommy Robinson was at the Oxford Union or Nick Griffin. I think this is worse. At least they had a fucking... At least, at least Tommy Robinson and Nick Griffin, whatever you think of them, at least they had... They stood by something. They, you know... Hopefully I'll get to meet as many of you guys as possible. Oh, I bet they will be grateful as well. The fucking people of Oxford will be lovely. I mean, you know, talking to you will be like having a fucking pet Alsatian. And I also promise to down as many pints as possible. Wow, down as many pints as possible. Jesus, oh, wow, Dave, you're such a bloody... You know, you, you'd fit in down the bloody pub, wouldn't you? Me old cockney. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to down as many pints as possible. Hey, you, you fucking wanker. Hmm. You're shit as you know you are. I'm also working on an Australian tour and hope to have some more... You're working on an Australian tour. It's easy, Dave. Get on a plane. Fuck off over there. Find the place with the most virgins and the most amount of fucking young male suicide and fucking... And you just go there. You'll be you'll have your audience. Info on that for you guys soon. You know, I've mentioned on the show lately that the endless hysteria of the left and the politically correct craziness that we're caught up in was eventually going to drag me back into stand-up comedy. <laughs> right, okay. If there is any... If the, I've... We'll give him this. That is the best argument against political correctness, cancel culture, any kind of like you know, you know, pe- pe- you know stigmatizing it, saying having certain words that aren't acceptable. That is the best argument against it. Where we, we sh- it's our fault, guys. We we should have like we, imagine it's going to drag me back. Yeah, because you're Al Pacino in this, ain't you, you motherfucker? Yeah, it was. It was stand. You left stand up. Stand up for the world of stand up was going. No, Dave, please, don't go. How will we possibly cope? It's going to drag you back. Now, what you needed was someone. Clearly, what you needed was someone like Jordan Peterson, a much more famous person who could fill a theatre on his own. And all you needed was to sit and go. Let's go again. Hey, Jordan, so do you mind if I? Uh, I had an idea. Uh, I wanted to do a. Uh, you know, I thought I might do some stand-up. Yeah, you know, just like, you know, I've got my best seven minutes here. And this finally came to fruition this past Sunday at the Irvine. This past Sunday it came to fruition, for he, Dave Rubin, did return to stand-up. An event that was literally described as apparently something that happened. I'm improv. 
The show is built. The improv, yeah, right. As an evening of stand up and sit down, as I. A stand up and sit down? Well, fucking hell. Jesus, talk about changing the game, nigga. Did about an hour of stand up, and then Bob Saget joined me on stage. Bob's. Poor old Bob Saget. I bet he's never had an easier gig in his life. He must have been there going, what the fucking hell am I doing? How did this guy get. Really? He's a, that. Wow. Bob Saget. Age for about 45 minutes of the sit down. It was awesome. It's, it's, see, it's amazing, isn't it? It's just weird how he just fucks with your mind. You're watching stand up. You're watching two stand ups. Do a sit down. I can't handle the fucking thing. It's like a Salvador Dali painting. In other words, shit. Eating so many of you guys out there in the show was a huge success. The manager of it's the because Bob Saget. told me that it was the first sold out standing ovation she's seen at the club in her 18 years. Right, well, they must have a fucking good lineup then, mustn't they? Also, Dave, do you think maybe it's got Bob Saget something to do with that? We're going to announce travel dates for upcoming stand-up gigs pretty soon, and I hope that you guys will join me for... Oh, Dave, I'm booking my donkey now. At least a two-drink minimum and plenty of... A two-drink minimum? Jesus Christ, I don't think any drugs exist that will, in enough quantities that I could take, that I could enjoy, and that I could... They could not... You, you, your, your fucking absolute abject misery would penetrate through. And finally, after years in the making, we taped our interview with Dr. Thomas Sowell yesterday. Op- years in the making, an interview. A location at... <laughs> years in the making. It talks about... It's not, it's not apocalypse now. It's sitting down talking to a geezer. Stanford University in San Francisco. We flew our whole team up there and rented a studio to make it happen. Because I've got shitloads of money. It was truly a personal and career highlight for me, and I can't wait to share our sit-down with you next week. Big thanks to... Well, Dave, I am literally on the edge of my... I cannot wait. Sit down. It's the new thing in comedy. Dave Rubin invented it. To our supporters on Patreon who make interviews like... Yeah, you people, you're the real criminals. ...possible. So all these announcements aside, whether you... What do you mean, announcements aside? There's seven seconds left on the video. You're in the U.S., India, Oxford, San Francisco, or anywhere else. We're all in this fight together. Keep- yeah, of course you are. Yeah, well, don't worry, guys. Dave's with you. Yay. Fighting for what you believe in, and I'll do the same. Yeah, you wouldn't fight this. You couldn't fight anything. Jesus Christ almighty. Bloody hell, you are the... You are O for life on any kind of actual fight. Right, that's that fucking video finished with. Oh, thank God that's over. Now, one down...